So what I want to do with this video is I want to create my own toy. I have done this before and there's a bit of a backstory about where these toys come from. So in the 80s, bear in mind I'm a big time toy collector. One of my favourite toys to collect are called the Mad Balls. Oh Mad Balls. Mad Balls. Mad Balls. Gross for one. Gross for all. We play with a Mad Ball. They're gross. Funny. Yucky. Mad There's ball. eight holders. For eight more Mad Balls. Now recently Mad Balls re-released a load of the old versions of the toys and then they also released a new line that were based on horror figures. So recently Mad Balls released a ton of movie, um, a ton of movie themed mad balls or horror and stuff like that and obviously they were something that I had to get because I love mad balls and I love horror films so straight up we got Jason that's the Jason one you got the um, the Leatherface one which is sick this is the first time I'm seeing him as well but he's a sick one very very sick so we had Jason, Leatherface, all the classic horror characters, but there were some that they didn't have the rights to so I had a mad little brainwave and I thought I'm gonna create my own from that series from stuff that they didn't have the rights to just for myself and I created one called the Ball of the Dead that what was based on the Evil Dead Book of the Dead the Necronomicon it went pretty successful I even took one to Japan and left it in the Mishka store because Mishka is a, a clothing brand from New York they have a store in Japan and they're also heavily influenced by uh, Mad Balls and the dude that owns it Greg Rivera is a big Mad Balls collector so I left one there for him as well so there's been a cool little story just with me making the first Mad Ball and it were really successful and then obviously instantly I start thinking of different ideas like well they didn't have the rights to this movie and this movie and I thought that one would look really good if I did an alien from They Live. John Carpenter's They Live is again one of my favourite films so to combine that with the Mad Ball thing and again do it just for myself would be really cool and if anyone else wants one then I can make one for them as well. So the whole point of this video is I've got a few days to create this Mad Ball in time for ToyCon 2019. So ToyCon is an event that's in London, it's the biggest, it's like one of only two designer toy shows in England and it's by far the biggest, it's been going for a few years. I stumbled upon, I stumbled upon this uh, event a few years ago uh, just at random while I was down in London on some other business and I ended up um, finding out that something on something was on called ToyCon, I went, it was wicked and it's full of all designer vinyl toys, a very very different scene to uh, like toy fairs and that kind of thing it's full of like arty types and designer people that like designer clothes and trainers and designer toys and art and stickers and all that kind of thing like got the, all the different stuff that I like separate to um, like vintage toy shows then I, I get from my toy con cons so I wanted this year to be able to go to it and take my own thing for the first time this is what I've started sculpting it's going to be one of the aliens from They Live the John Carpenter movie or based around that uh, the new Mad Ball so what I'm going to do is finish the teeth, do some more sculpting like on the face. I might even chop the ears off and do them separately if that's what I can do. So if I get the face to a nice level today, I'll bake it and I can put his nose in, um, fill the gaps in the mouth and then start putting details on top of that. And then when I put the hair on it, it means I'm not squishing it. So hopefully that'll work. So obviously I've got to sculpt this thing. You start off with a ball of tin foil and then I'll squish that, so I get tin foil, squish that into a ball, I've wrapped it in super sculpted clay and then start building the elements to create something that looks like one of the aliens from They Live. So after a few days I've kind of got this sculpt together, um, got all the elements together then you have to start baking it. You bake it in layers, you put it in the oven and I've never done this before so I was worried that it was going to like, uh, I don't know, melt or burn or whatever but it came out alright and then once you've done a layer of baking it allows you to sculpt a little bit more on top of that and you can build it up in layers, kind of like as if you were doing layers in Photoshop but actually 3D layers on a ball. Now from here I've got to get it cast, cast and make a mould of it so that I can pour stuff inside it and create others create uh, multiples so I hooked up with some guys called the Toy Bunker now the Toy Bunker I met when I first went to ToyCon the very first time and I've stayed in touch with them ever since they're very cool guys they live not too far from me and they've got their own studio so I've got to head out to Doncaster and uh, get to their studio and and let's try and get this thing molded Now the first thing that the toy bunker that you'll see is that they've got one of the sickest collections of Japanese Safubi vinyl kaiju figures. They've got like a wicked, wicked collection. So we had to check that out first. We're here at the toy bunker. I want to see their shit. And their studio just reminds me of my own setup. 
just cool artwork and toys and monsters and colour and toxic neon vibrant fucking elements all over. Exactly my kind of place. So I know straight away I feel very at home in the studio and I can't wait to get on with uh, moulding my figure. I know that it's in very good hands with these guys because they also create their own toys uh, and their stuff is very, very well made, very nice, very slick. And I know that my stuff is in good hands if I leave it to them to, to sort the mould. Make it into the mould, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, no, that's it. That's it. It's just for standing purposes, that's it. It's just for stand bit standing purposes, that's all. I don't know if there's guys who are proper, like, do calculations and stuff, but we're not those guys, if you no, know what I mean. No, no, eyeball it. We're exactly. We could put two on it, so you don't pour into two, but you just got one to support it when it's in the mould. Yeah. Just so it's not stood on one point, yeah. so it's stood on two. Clean up, you know what I mean? Well, it's when. Yeah. But that's all it is, it's just a little bit more to a either sand back or you know trim back well, with your Once it's fingered, you know, once it's stood in the box. It'll be fine, yeah. So we're in their studio, they've got a nice little underground workspace and these guys are creating a mould out of Lego. They build a mould out of Lego to get it to the, to the exact right size. I've seen many different ways of creating moulds. We went for a version uh, that was showed to me by my friend Chance Priest in Texas uh, where uh, you, you build a mould. The mould can be as crude as you want as long as it wraps around the figure and it's sturdy enough. Uh, and then what we do is we have to mix up a type of silicone for moulding. Silicon, silicone, whatever you call it, and then pour that into the Lego mould. This is stuff I left all to them guys because I, I've, I've done it before but I'm not confident enough to do it myself knowing that these guys do it day in day out so they created the mold and then it's put in a, a pressure vacuum chamber so then it has to be left for like 24 hours to cure and one of the things that went one of the things that went bad there's a few things that went bad during this uh, during the making of this toy one of the things is that we didn't have enough silicon so we had to let it uh, fill it up as much as we could then put that in the pressure molder luckily silicon does mold to cured silicone but we had to order some and then that, that had to come so it again put me back by two days when I need to be getting this figure finished. We've just drove to Donny at Doncaster to anyone that's not local and I've picked up the mould so this is the mould for the um, for the mad ball there he is he's got a little bit damaged underneath on his hair and where is it this side one side Oh, that he's, he's play. Oh, yeah, there. There's like a little bit of chip on his head, but uh, yeah, it's minor. It just means that I might have to do a bit of clean up when I pull them, but I won't know until I pull one tomorrow. That's when I plan to do it. So yeah, hopefully tomorrow I can do the first pull on it and uh, and see how they go. I can't wait. Two days later, the silicons arrived. Toy bunker guys have made me a mold, and then I've gone to Doncaster to pick up that mold, and then now I can start casting it. Right now we're going to try and do the first pull of the toy. I've never used uh, this resin colouring before, I've never used it, it's a whole new thing for me. I'm 50-50 confident whether the mould will even work. We had a bit of problem with the silicon seeping under the sculpture that I'd done because I had like some bits that I thought weren't overlaps but in the pressurising machine they became overlaps or some shit like that. I don't know, this stuff's very touch and go, very trial and error uh, and we're still learning how to do it but today yeah, gonna uh, have a good go at mixing the resin together, pouring it into the toy and trying to get at least one good pull. I want to make four or five of these things, so if we can get four or five, I'll be like more than happy. But yeah, we're gonna try and do at least one pull today. Also, the packaging arrived. I, I went for like a specific kind of like box packaging that was specifically for a ball. So hopefully that'll also uh, fit and everything will be all right. Who knows, we'll, uh, we'll have to see how we get on. So I've gone for something called Easy Flow 120, which is what I made the ball of the dead out of and when you pour this into the mold and you swirl it round and build up layers it gives you a nice hollow style mad ball which is exactly what I wanted a lot of the new uh, kid robot mad balls are like a hard hollow vinyl and that's the that's the uh, result that I wanted with this figure so I've got the mold slacky come round we did some filming and um, basically just trying out the ratios because it's different every time you make something it has to be 50 50 but you don't know how many times you've got to pour this into the mold and swirl it around to get a good thickness and each sculpture do has different layers of thickness and every single one's different i never really know what i'm doing because even when i did my first one it was just trial and error i was making it up but i think if i just filled the same line on both cups in this resin we also added a bit of black and again it's trial and error like this black dye I didn't know how much you're supposed to put in I'm pouring it in I later found out from the toy bunker guys that you can just dip a stick into the dye and then mix it into the resin and that'll give you the, the result you wanted but we didn't know that it was all trial and error like I said it's pretty much the first time of me using this method to pour that in there mix it pour it into here a bit into here it makes it a lot more than that now no no it fucking It's 
and swirl it around. See, before I had a two-part mold, so this this process were a bit different. Basically, it has arms and legs that are separate, has a separate base, a separate head, body and leg, and, and arms. Well, they do like kaiju and that. Yeah, it's like a smoke monster with like buildings. Or it could have um, like gone into everywhere it's supposed to go into, but the mold, the actual mold itself, isn't up to scratch. Oh, there it is. So. Um, some were dark black, some were grey, but we started pulling them out and I instantly saw that there was um, not really air bubbles, but there was little bits where the mould, the, the actual sculpt had cracked inside the mould. So I'm going to have to now use putty, I use green stuff putty from the Warhammer shop, the Games Workshop, to, to fill in all the bits around the figure that didn't come out right and um, it's not a huge process, but it's just more time added to something when I'm the time is already ticking against me. The first pull came out nice, um, a couple of little issues with air bubbles and that kind of thing, but minor, minor, minor stuff like you can tell the difference between a mould that's been made in a pressure moulding machine and one that's been made without. So yeah, we've got a nice pull of the toy. I've done a few more just to see what they're looking like using different pigments and that kind of thing. They're here. Whee. So, uh, and then I did a, a, a ball of the dead and tested out the new packaging, which is here. So that's looking. Nice, so I'm hoping by the end of the day I've got half of the stuff left and I've done one, two, three, four, five, five already. So if we can get another couple out, that'll be fucking awesome and we'll be ready for Toycon with a nice few uh, balls on the stall. Pow! Looking forward to it. So I was only supposed to pull, I think I was looking to get like four or five. I ended up pulling eight. I pulled a couple more ball of the deads out using the, uh, the mold of that while I was there because I thought I'll just take some of them as well. So after a day of pulling him out, uh, it was now ready uh, to paint him. I've been working around the clock trying to get these balls finished. I painted uh, one of the coloured formaldehyde face balls and I weren't happy with it. I did it in a gloss finish and I just didn't like it at all. It got a good reception on social media when I put the picture up, but it just wasn't for me. So I was re-sprayed it, gone back, done them in a more matte finish, spent a lot longer on the balls, um, way longer than I wanted to, but they do look a lot better for it. So I'd much rather sell something that I'm a lot more happy with. And I've got six of these fuckers outside now drying in the sun because it's quite sunny today. Uh, with a new matte gloss finish so hopefully they're looking all right i can finish the boxes we'll get them packaged up and we'll get on that train tomorrow to london and see if people like them or not so i did an initial paint job i wasn't happy with it i took them outside i sprayed them all black again and then started painting them again and i'm gonna do two different versions i'm gonna do the classic blue and pinky red kind of colored Veiliv alien and then I want to do one where we see the black and white alien like in the movie when uh, he puts when Roddy Piper puts the glasses on John Narda he puts the glasses on and everything's in black and white so I wanted to do a black and white version as well so I've got a whole day now just to get these painted and get them done in time for the following day which is Toycon. I also had an idea of how I wanted to box them. I did get this, uh, this idea off Chance Priest. He showed me that you can get these boxes. So I got these boxes sent through. They arrived just in time. I had to spray the bases black. I filled them with like some Easter kind of packaging, but black and white. So it looked a bit like fuzzy TV style packaging. Uh, and then I sealed them with a slime house sticker so that you had to break the sticker in order to get them open. So if someone wanted to keep them in their box, uh, then you can have like, you'd know if it had been taken out of the box or not. So now I've got eight of these things made up and we're ready to take them to Toycon. Toycon as always was awesome. It was had all it had tons of six of Fubi and vinyl and kaiju and dudes from all over Europe, all over Japan, America, all over the world, all gathered together to this one event, which is not a giant event because this is such a niche scene. But like the people there are all representing. It has all the top guys there, and, and there was some wicked stuff. So the whole point of making this toy was because I wanted to make it for myself. The second thing I wanted to do is I wanted to make it in order to take it to Toycon just so that I had something there. I wasn't even bothered about selling them all at Toycon. I just wanted to take them there just so that it was on display and I could say that I've had something there that I took down myself. And 
I quickly found out that when I was at Toycon, like once I'd put these on a stall, I put them on a Flossed and Paradise stall, the amount of stuff that was there, they was just swamped. They was just like completely swamped amongst all of the stuff and people weren't even noticing them. So I was uh, not disheartened because I didn't expect to sell any, but I would have at least liked to have not liked them to have not been as swamped so if i go down next time i'm definitely just going to have my own stall or have half of another stall or something like that but the event wasn't a washout it was really good i got to interview tim clark i met tim clark who created the boglins that was awesome just meeting him and he's a really nice guy and he had some really cool stuff with him and i left and it's a two-day event toy con so i left my toys there to, because they didn't sell on the first day I thought I'll leave them there I'm going to go on but I'll leave them with Lost in Paradise and we can sell them we might sell some on the Sunday and then ironically I put pictures of them on my social media on the way home on the train and sold them all on social media that night so um, I had to tell Floston, Nick at Floston, to take them off the stall because I'd already sold them and I sold them all around the world. I'm sending packages to America and everything. So it was really cool and it just goes to show that sometimes like you could make something or create something or do something with a certain little goal in mind and it might not go that way, but you end up moving it in a different direction. And I went down, to, like I said, I still went down to ToyCon. I made some really good uh, contacts for when I make my next toy. I met Tim Clark, did lots of good networking and made lots of cool new friends and then sold all the bowl, bowls that I'd made. Uh, online anyway so now i can create as many as i want i can just keep creating these toys different colors and that kind of thing so the whole experiment of making the toy was very successful and i can't wait to make the next one